Hello everyone and welcome back to the dork side. I am the dork in the road and today I'm going to show you how I load this motorcycle into this truck by myself all the time. That's right everyone, I am the dork in the road and I want to be your internet writing buddy. So please consider subscribing. Don't forget to turn on those notifications so that you know when I post awesome new content just like this. So I've had a lot of questions, a lot of people ask me for a more sort of detailed overview of how I load my motorcycle in the truck. So uh, I'm gonna run down the steps that I take every time. This works well for me by myself so that you can feel more confident giving it a shot yourself. So I apologize, my beard's all dusty and weird. I've been riding all day. I'm up here at San Diego OHV area and uh, just getting ready to go home. Seems like a better backdrop than my backyard. So uh, let me just run down what I do and how I load the bike. This should work for any dirt bike, dual sport, or even bigger bikes if that's what you need to do. So much traffic. For reference, this is a Toyota Tundra with a six and a half foot bed. And this is a 2020 Suzuki DRZ 400. So yes, I'm putting my dual sport in the back of my truck, but I'm also two hours from home and I wasn't going to ride it all the way up here in my trail riding gear, so deal with it. Let's start with first, things you need. So the items you'll need in order to load and transport a motorcycle in the back of your truck. Item number one, a motorcycle. Check. Item number two, a truck. It's right here, you're just going to have to trust me. Item number three is a ramp. This is my trackside aluminum ramp. I got this at Cycle Gear, they sell it at Revzilla. Uh, I'll put a link to all these pieces in the description if you're curious or you want to get look at what I use specifically, but this is an aluminum ramp. It's light, easy to use, so I've, I've enjoyed it. And it comes with a strap to attach it to your truck, which is important. You also need straps. I use four straps. You can get away with two, a lot of people do, but I like the extra peace of mind of strapping down the back too. So these two are the Rhino USA motorcycle straps. They've got integrated soft loops, which I'm not going to use today because I've got hooks on my forks, but when I didn't have those, it was really nice to have those integrated soft loops to go over the bars so that you're not hooking the tie downs directly to your bars. So you can load basically any motorcycle, whether you've got the tie down loops or not. With these straps, highly recommend them. They've been really great so far. 25 bucks to come in a cool bag. And then these are some old, some old crappy Home Depot uh, tie downs that I have that I just use for the back. Oh, and the other thing you need, unless you're freakishly tall, like my boy attention deficit who can step up into the back of his truck in one step, I need a stool. So I used the cooler for a while. I've used a lot of different things, but this is a Harbor Freight working platform. It's aluminum, it's light, it was cheap. I think I paid $25 for it, I'll link it for you. It's handy to carry around, I don't mind if I beat it up. It's exactly the right height to work as a motorcycle stand I've discovered on several occasions. And it's cheap enough, I don't care if it gets stolen out of the back of my truck. Step one, after you've got all your stuff together, is to put the ramp on the tailgate. Because of the length of my bed, I have to hop the ass end of the bike over. I load it up all the way over to the right so I can hop the, the rear of the bike over to the left and get the tailgate shut. Uh, it's nice to be able to get the tailgate shut because I can keep the ramp and the stool and gas can and everything. I have this bed liner, so I just line it up with one of these lines in my bed liner. It's to eyeball. Your bed, obviously. You might be asking yourself, what's with the strap? Well, if you've never done this before, if you've done this before, you know this. But if you've never done this before, um, motorcycles have torque on the rear wheel. And so when you get up to the top, it is possible for your knobs or your tire to catch in these grooves and push your ramp backwards and off of the truck and you to fall down. It's unlikely, but I've seen enough loading fail videos that I always run this strap. So let me show you where I put it. I just take both ends of the strap to my receiver, receiver hitch, hitch receiver, and I tighten it down tight as I can. I will sit on the ramp and tighten it down to get it as tight as possible so I know that it's right up against it. Sorry, there are there is a plethora of bugs out here today. But nice and tight. Not the most flattering pose. What are you going to do? Now, I like to do everything as smoothly as possible, so I like to prepare everything as much as possible. So for me, that means putting the straps on and setting them up there where I can grab them as soon as I put the bike in because I'm by myself. So either I got to put it down on the kickstand, which isn't the end of the world, or it's a lot nicer to just be able to wheel it in, grab the straps and hook them on. So I will, I will position the straps to the right and left of where the bike is going to be. So I can just grab them while holding the bike as I put it in. It's important to get these out of the way so that you don't get one stuck under your tire. Better to have more slack than not enough. Because it's really hard to hold the bike and reach down, pull on the strap and hit the cam buckle to release the slack. So I like extra slack. Try not to get this twisted if you can avoid it. But I just stick it on and then I'll just stick it right here so I can grab it. And I'll do that on both sides once I get the bike up here. Now I'm going to put the bike in the truck. 
Uh, at first, you're probably gonna slowly walk it up with the clutch. You're gonna be anxious. You're gonna stop a bunch of times. I start the bike and run it up, walking up next to it. Some people ride it in. I don't trust myself enough to be able to stop in time in the bed of this truck and get my feet down. So I'll walk it up. That's what most people start with. So I'll just use the engine and I feather the clutch enough to keep it sort of steady. It's easiest if you just do it all in one motion and kind of let the bike pull you up into the bed of the truck. Since I'm videotaping, I'll probably screw it up. There's nothing wrong with getting it up a ways, sort of holding it. You can use your front brake too. Feather, let it up, feather, let it up as you're comfortable. Get up on the stool, move it up a little more. Get up in the bed, move it up a little more. Like I said, I've done it enough times. I like to do it all at once. That's easier, but at first you'll probably do it a stage at a time. tip line the bike up as straight in front of the ramp as you can you don't want to come in at an angle and if you can find a hill where the nose of your truck is down that will flatten out the angle of your ramp some and make it a lot less scary i do that in my driveway every time it's harder to do out here but um we survived put the kickstand down for safety you can even set the bike on it if you want but it's not going to be in there very long because i got to put this side on so i'll just show you what the soft loops look like i'm not going to use them but these integrated soft loops are nice because you take this and you go up around your handlebar and you hook it in through here and only nylon is touching your handlebar, not a metal hook. Uh, and I would do that up under here, but I don't need to because I've got these Canyon Dancer hooks right here. So I'm just going to hook directly to that. Make sure your thing's not twisted. That's important. These hooks with the clips, very nice to have. Super peace of mind. And then when I do it, I like to get the right side as tight as I can because I know I'm going to have to lean it the other way. Actually, I like to get both hooks on before I tighten it down. So that's one hook. See how, what I mean about how nice it is to have the slack and have it right here so I'm not trying to hold the bike up and reach around and do a bunch of stuff. Two hooks in. Okay, right. I'm going to tighten this side down first. You want to keep the front wheel as straight as you can. That's the biggest important thing. And I like to so lean it a little extra far to the right because it gives me more to play with when I bring it back to the, to the left. That is facing forward on the bike. See how it's leaning right? It's because I'm going to tighten it down way hard on this side once I hop this ass end over, which I'm going to do right now. Give myself a little bit more tightness. You're going to compress your suspension. Some people use a block of wood or a fork saver. I haven't yet. I haven't had any problems. With these hooks, it's unlikely to bounce and pop the hook off. So There are other precautions you can take. I haven't done it. Okay, and then I use the suspension to move the ass of the bike over so I can get the tailgate close. <sighs> See, this is a lot easier if you have a rack. It doesn't need to come over as far as you think. See how it's leaning, like I said? Now I can tighten down this side. <sighs> now you can roll with just the front two straps. See how when I move the bike, it moves the truck? That's how I know it's tight enough. This is gonna be fine all the way home. But I like to put the back straps on just to keep the back from bouncing around, moving around. And this isn't perfectly straight, but here's the other pro tip I've discovered. I used to get super obsessive about exactly straight, make sure it's pulling all the way forward. Here's the thing, with these two straps on here, there is no way this thing falls out of the back of this truck. It might tip over, it might lean, it might bounce around, it might get crooked and fall down, it might scratch up or dent the inside of the truck, it might, worst case, bend a lever or something. But with two straps on it, it's not going anywhere. And if you put the rear on, you're fine. Keep an eye on it while you're driving. Understand that it might shift a little. Check it whenever you've gone over something super, super rough. But if you get it strapped down like this, where it moves the truck when you move the bike, you can drive like normal. It's not going anywhere, at least in my experience. And I don't take it easy when I drive up here on the highway and stuff. In fact, I might go explore down the side road for a while once I've got this in. So that's the front straps, they're on. This thing's tight. Don't forget to take your key out. Nice thing about having to use the motor to get it up the ramp is that I never forget to take my key with me because I always need to put it in the bike before I leave. All right, let's do the rear. I'm gonna go ahead and apologize in advance because I know I'm not getting this thing level every time. Now, um, you can also buy standalone soft loops, 
which I've used in the past. It's just a piece of nylon with two loops, one on each end, about a foot long. And then you can loop it through your rack, around your handlebars, whatever. Those are super handy. That's what I used to use. Uh, and you can loop them up under your subframe too, like here on the DRZ, you could get it up under this. And that's what I would do with the 250L. That I usually just put it to the rack. But the DRZ's got these holes on the back. I don't know if you can see that, where the EVAP canister goes on the California model. So I just use that because it's directly in the frame and I tie it down to that. So tie down into it and then pull down on the suspension and tighten your strap. Same on the other side. Put it up and through. Okay, now the most important step. Shake it, move it. You have to say the words, that's not going anywhere. That's dad magic. As long as you say it, whatever you said will not move. But if you don't say it, you're in trouble. Last thing is unhook the ramp, put it in the back of the truck, put the stool in the back of the truck, close the tailgate and drive home. That's how you load a uh, bike in the back of the truck. Now, let me tell you how to get it out of the truck. Ready? Do everything I just said, but in reverse order. It's basically it. Coming down is a lot easier than putting it in. Uh, the big trick there is to use the clutch as a brake. Put it in first gear and let your clutch slow it as you bring it down the ramp. Make sure you're straight when you come out. That's what I do. If you have any questions, uh, thoughts, suggestions for people trying to do this, ways I can improve my process, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I appreciate that. Uh, if you learned something or enjoyed the video, please consider hitting that like button. Those likes really make the video more visible and convince YouTube to show it to other people, which I appreciate. Appreciate your support. And um, if you really want to be a big supporter, consider becoming a patron like these fine folks. Thanks, patrons. You're my favorite. I'm sweaty because it's hot out here. But for now, and as always, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. And please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Happy loading. Happy riding. Thank you.